This is the first part in the Newman Projection mini-series. The first thing you want to ask yourself is what is a Newman Projection? A Newman Projection is a way to show conformational isomers. A conformational isomer, also called a rotational isomer, is when you have the same molecule but it's facing a different direction in space. This is typical when you look at the carbon to carbon single bond on an atom. Since a sigma bond is free to rotate, the substituents have the option to turn 360 degrees and therefore temporarily face away from each other. When you look at a Newman projection, you're looking directly down the bond angle so that you can see how the substituents on the front carbon and the substituent on the rear carbon react with each other. In this molecule, if I put my eye at the front carbon so that the front carbon eclipses the rear carbon, I'm going to see one hydrogen in the up position and two blue hydrogens in the down position. The center is the forward carbon, and that's this carbon right here. The rear carbon is eclipsed by the front carbon, but it's hiding somewhere in the back there. The only thing you see from the rare carbon are two hydrogens in the up position and the one hydrogen in the down position. To help you understand this concept, let's look over at my model kit. So here I have my model kit showing the ethane molecule as drawn on the screen. I have my two carbons and I have two green hydrogens up and one down on the left I have two blue hydrogens down and one up on the right. When you look at this in a Newman projection, you have the forward carbon eclipsing the rare carbon. The way you envision this is imagine taking your hand and wrapping it around the carbon to carbon bond between the atoms. This way, all you see is a circle between the front and the rare carbon and you still see the substituents. Well, if my hand wasn't blocking, you would see all the substituents so that I have one blue hydrogen in the up position, two down, and the rear I have two green hydrogens in the up position and the other one down. When you look at rotating the carbon to carbon bond, you can choose to keep the forward or the back carbon constant and the other one gets rotated 60 degrees each time. I will keep the front one in the same position, rotate the rear carbon 60 degrees. Notice that the carbons now have the hydrogens exactly behind each other, exactly behind each other. If I rotate this another 60 degrees, I now have it staggered so that I have front, back, front, back, and so on visible. When I rotate another 60 degrees, once again, front, back, eclipsing, and so on. Because this is ethane, the eclipsed and the staggered conformations are all going to be the same because it's hydrogen gauche to hydrogen and in this case I have hydrogen eclipsing hydrogen. Now let's see this on the screen. Looking back at my screen, the orange circle represents my hand holding the carbon to carbon single bond thereby eclipsing the rear hydrogen. The way this is set up where you see alternating front, back, front, back this is considered the staggered conformation. The staggered conformation allows the hydrogens to be relatively far apart from each other. Because they're not too close, they don't create any strain between the atoms, and so this is considered a stable conformation. The only interaction you do have is a slight neighboring effect, and this is called the Gauche interaction. Gauche, I believe, comes from the word meaning right. You have one slightly to the right of the other. This is a minor instability. If I do a 60 degree rotation, where I keep the front carbon steady, so the hydrogens haven't moved, but the rear carbon was rotated so that the hydrogens are now directly behind the front hydrogens, this is considered the eclipse conformation. This is considered the eclipse conformation because the forward hydrogens directly eclipse the rear hydrogens. This is an unfavorable conformation because the atoms are too close to each other. When atoms get too close, you have a high energy and unstable molecule. Given that this is an ethane molecule, there are only two conformations, staggered and eclipsed, 
But if you have a higher or a more complex molecule where you have substituents, you will have different degrees of stable and unstable conformations, and we'll look at that in a later video. We'll finish off with a quick energy diagram for the staggered and eclipsed conformations of the ethane molecule. For the purpose of this diagram, I will simply draw the lines representing where the bonds for hydrogen are located, but I will not actually draw the hydrogen since that is the only substituent here. At zero degrees, assuming we're starting with a staggered conformation, we're at the lowest possible energy. Rotating 60 degrees, we get a higher energy due to the eclipse conformation. Rotating another 60 gets me back to the staggered conformation. 180 back to the eclipse conformation. 240 again staggered. 300 again eclipsed. And 360 or 0 degrees brings me back to the staggered conformation we started with. The height here is an arbitrary representation of energy. Some professors will make you memorize the specific energy numbers, but the rest just want you to understand what is considered high energy and what is considered low energy. You can also draw this diagram without the actual ethane structures by simply marking low and high energy representing where your molecule is in the current conformation or the current rotation of your molecule, and then connect them with an potential energy graph. Again, since this is ethane and I only have two conformers or two conformational isomers, the graph is simply going to show up and down, up for eclipsed because the atoms are too close to each other and high energy, down for staggered because the atoms are spaced and therefore in lower energy. Be sure to join me in the next video where we look at more complex molecules like butane and substituted propane and draw more complex energy diagrams. Do you have any additional organic chemistry questions? Then how about joining my weekly organic chemistry review sessions live, online, and from the comfort of your home. For more information, visit leahforsci.com forward slash organic chemistry.